we're standing in a, uh, a mixed forest, but it's dominated right here by balsam fir. Uh, it's hard for me to know exactly how old they are, but they're just judging them to be probably in the 30 year range or so. Uh, these, these balsam fir will be the most uh, affected by the budworm if it was to build up to critical populations in a stand like this. The spruce budworm is a member of Lepidoptera and it is a moth essentially that uh, has its life cycle um, in, the f in the main spruce fir forest and throughout the uh, Canadian forest and every 30 to 60 years in this part of its range it will uh, undergo a large outbreak and the budworm essentially defoliates the trees over a period of years and after about three to five years of this kind of defoliation the trees begin to die. The one in the, from 1970 to 85, which many foresters my age and older remember very well, uh, basically uh, defoliated millions of acres of northern Maine. There was a lot of mature spruce and fir at that point. There was a lot of dependence on the spruce and fir for paper making and for solid wood products, lumber, etc. And uh, it was uh, it was it came on very quickly in 1970 and ba basically just went through repeated periods of defoliation and and killing the forest. Something in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 million cords of wood were were killed. The outbreak that has uh, just started here actually started about 2005 or 6 and it has grown in Quebec uh, really quite quickly uh, from 2005 6 on to today um, to give you a sense of how quickly it's growing last year the outbreak uh, footprint of de dead and dying uh, spruce and fir was about 10 million acres and today yeah, this year, the Quebec government just released the report, and it's up. It's it's grown by 50 percent to 15 million acres. So, just to give you a sense of the size of that the entire state of Maine forest is 17 million acres in size. The outbreak on the North Shore is equal to the area of Maine's forest, and it is um, expanding uh, quite quickly. It's uh, the moths uh, are moving moving south. So this is a end of the season check when we come and look and see if any budworm have been flying in this area. And we got budworm. The way that we've been tracking over time are using uh, pheromone traps and the trap counts over the past four or five years have just been steadily increasing. The numbers are doubling. Uh, every year right now. And then at some point, there's an exponential explosion of the moths. I think for the average uh, person in Maine to prepare for the outbreak is just to be aware that it's going to happen. And uh, we're un it's unclear at this point about how severe it might be. Uh, we think there may be a role as the outbreak proceeds to use citizen science, to, to use people to help put out trap, uh, moth traps, um, to do other kinds of reporting, and to uh, work closely with the landowners who are having to deal with this outbreak uh, to be supportive of the efforts that they might have going. We're in competition with the budworm, and, and that's where the problem lies. So if people are looking to harvest the trees, then they need to be paying attention to what's happening on their property.